Gaining the attention of media takes more than just issuing a press release. Actually, it takes a lot more in both time and effort. That's not to say a press release isn't useful or valuable when it comes to marketing. It can be, but it's not going to land you that podcast appearance or TV interview. If you're wondering how to master media pitching, then stick around. This video is for you. Hey there, I'm Julie the Book Broad, founder of Book Launchers, your fabulous professional self-publishing services team. Your book can be a stepping stone to incredible and influential media appearances, if you know how to leverage it to get there. At Book Launchers, we don't worry about creating one single press release for you to send out across all media outlets in hopes of getting a bite of interest, because that doesn't work. Instead, our marketing team crafts targeted, short pitches specific to each outlet and specific to exactly what you and your book can offer that outlet's audience. Here's how you can replicate what we do for our authors. First, put on your researching cap. <laughs> you need to find potential media outlets that may be interested in what you can contribute. A list of relevant, active, and niche-driven media contacts that publish content within your area of expertise, those will bring you more value and success than a giant list of thousands of generic outlets, or worse, a pre-drafted media list that you buy online. Please don't waste money on a media list. So your research should begin with checking out who your audience is listening to, reading, or watching. We're talking newspapers, magazines, blogs, radio, and TV stations, and of course, podcasts. <laughs> See if the outlet publishes content relevant to your book. If so, grab the producer's contact information, which is usually found in their bios, social media, or on the website somewhere. Collect all of this into a spreadsheet for easy organization and access. This way you can also record when you did outreach and what the angle was, so you have that in one place when you reach out for a second or third or fourth time to follow up. Next, you need to craft your pitch. And this is not one pitch fits all. Customize your pitch based on who you're pitching. Are they a magazine journalist, a podcast host, a TV host, or a book reviewer? What topics do they usually cover? Your pitch needs to highlight how you and your book can help them and their specific audience, how it fits in, but stands out a little from what they normally talk about. That means, yep, more research. Still, research, still hat, still a hat on? <laughs> hat on my head it is. <laughs> that means, yep, you need to do a bit more research, see? Research hat, still on. But now instead of the who you're targeting, you're researching what you're pitching. No two outlets are the same, even if they're within the same genre or cover the same type of topics. Kind of like books, right? I mean, Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings might sound like the same thing if you describe them generically, but every fantasy fan knows that the two are worlds apart, literally. like. Westeros is probably pretty far away from Middle Earth. The same could be said for nonfiction books, of course. There are countless real estate or financial or memoirs out there, but what makes each one unique to the audience that you're trying to appeal to? Did you say, what did you say? Did you say hook? If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and post in the comments, I said hook. Because yes, my friends, a well-crafted hook makes your book stand out and also makes your pitch stand out. Individualized pitches tell the outlet why they should care about you and how you can bring value to their outlet. That's the hook you need when pitching to each media outlet you've got your eye on. When I was in the real estate space, I built a really strong relationship with the editors at Canadian Real Estate Wealth Magazine. I had read months and months of their back issues. I knew the kind of tactical numerical articles they liked, and I knew some of the topics they hadn't covered that were within the range of topics they had covered. I sent a pitch to the editor of two articles I could write and why they were perfect for them. I got invited to write one of them, and I ended up being a regular contributor to their magazine. I was even on the cover of one or two of their issues, and I was a speaker at their events across Canada for many years in a row. My pitch stood out because I had done a lot of research, and I had an angle that fit with what they liked, but was just different enough. So ask yourself, self? What's the most compelling angle of your message that that particular audience needs to hear? Just like how you crafted your hook for your book, a successful media pitch highlights a problem the audience is facing and the solution that you and your messaging provides. You could even reference another expert in your space that you saw they covered and say something like, I saw that you had Eric Brotman featured in issue 32. He did a great job sharing why retirement can be a new phase of your life versus the end of work. My strategies for choosing a low-cost country to live this new phase of your life could be the perfect angle for your audience. Complete with my detailed research on the three best places in the world to retire to, 
I can offer tips to make it work with health insurance, finance, and family. That's just an example that I kind of made up. I probably would change it a little bit now that I'm thinking about it, but that would be all I would say along with a one or two sentence bio about myself. This takes time and you have to do this research if you want results. Devote time to diving into the outlet's website, social media, scrolling their past content and figure out how your stuff can help their audience by solving a problem or adding value to their audience's life. When the media contact at that outlet reads your pitch, it should be specific and targeted enough that they can see you did the work and took the time to research who they are, who their audience is, and what they're looking to give them. If you present a strong enough hook, they should be able to see just how they can present it to their audience right off the bat. Here's a tip. Do not start the pitch off by saying that you're a big fan if you're not legitimately a big fan. I was speaking with a podcaster the other day who says he gets about 40 pitches a week and almost all of them start off that way. If you're legitimately a big fan, then you better immediately highlight something specific that proves it. Like saying, your interview with Sally made me cry. It should come with a tear warning. So now that you've got the angle, craft the pitch. Keep it short, clear, and direct. A snappy subject line under 10 words and a pitch no more than two paragraphs is what you should aim for. And if two paragraphs seems too short to say what you wanna say, then go back to that part where we talked about hook and messaging. <laughs> a hook is called a hook for a reason. Even in pitching, it should be one or two sentences max. Step three, to your well-crafted, well-researched email, you should always attach a professional media kit. It should include your bio, sample speaking topics, the book description, and any social media links. We've got a great video on media kits that I'll put at the end of this video for you. Be sure to also offer to send them a copy of your book, either physical or digital. Even if they pass on their pitch, you never know what could happen if they do decide to pick up your book anyway. So it never hurts to send a copy if they say they're interested. Step four, wait. Yeah. After you send out your pitch, patience is most definitely a virtue. Media pitching is not an overnight thing. It can take weeks or even months to hear back from outlets. It's important to remember to keep your chin up and don't be discouraged if you don't hear back right away. Our team does a round of outreach, then follow-ups, follow-ups, and even more follow-ups. The number of times we have a win come in three to six months after the initial pitch would surprise you, but it doesn't surprise me anymore. Give it two weeks, then follow up with another personalized email. Any sooner and you risk bothering and annoying them or getting sent directly to that dreaded spam folder. The best wins though can come from follow-ups. So do check back in after a couple of weeks. Carefully considering and crafting each pitch you're sending can be a process, but it's worth the time and effort. All that research and writing may mean that you only get to do 20 pitches this month, but that's okay. Better 20 directed pitches with two to four yeses than throwing away your time and money on pitches that will get you nowhere. Timing is even more important to keep in mind when it comes to media. Podcast hosts often have a backlog of interviews saved and can be months ahead on scheduling. If you want media appearances to coincide with your book launch or some other event, you have to start pitching weeks or even months in advance. It's also worth noting that a pitch sent mid-December could get lost in the holidays you're probably better to save it for the second week of January or get the pitching in before the end of November if you can, unless your pitch is really specific to something going on in the world. Bonus tip, it helps to be available and flexible with your time. When it comes to TV spots, you'll often find out the night before that you're invited for the next day. Sometimes even speaking opportunities can be really short notice. Very often interview requests come last minute or on a tight deadline. People have jobs and commitments, but media does not wait. If you're not ready, they will move on to the next source. When a good media opportunity comes up, be flexible as possible with your time so you can take advantage of it. Now, deciding when to start your marketing can be tough, especially when it comes to pitching. This video right here is worth checking out to know when to jump into marketing mode. And if you wanna check out what your media kit should look like, that beauty is right here. Either way, I would love to hang out more, so please click to the next video and I'll see you there.